Hamed is an architect, researcher, and educator. He has studied architecture in Iran, in, in Tehran, Iran, um, held masters from uh, TU Delft and U, uh, UAV, and gained his PhD from the uh, city as a project program at the uh, Berlag Institute and TU Delft. He teaches Diploma Unit 7 and is a co-director of uh, the Projective Cities Enfield, Enfield program at the Architectural Association, Association School of Architecture. His practice de uh, develops research-led uh, co co uh, curatorial projects uh, such as uh, Zoe Zengelis, um, is, it, is it correct? <laughs> uh, fields, uh, fragments, fictions, uh, for uh, Carnegie Museum of Art uh, 2022, revolution uh, beginning at homes for uh, Sharjah Architecture, Architecture um, Tiernal 2019, and uh, the uh, Architecture of Fulfillment for the uh, Venice Biennial uh, 2014. His books includes, include uh, uh, do you remember how perfect every, everything was? The work of Zoe Zengli's uh, 2022 and the uh, uh, elusive modernist Gabriel Gebrekian uh, 2020. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I would like to thank Olnar for organizing such great events uh, and also extending my thanks to uh, AA public program super team, Manny Jan Harriet, and all of you who joined us today. Um, in response to the agenda set out by the organizers of the symposium, in my short contribution today, I would like to revisit a very particular moment and very well discussed moment in uh, the history of modernist architecture, which, and in particular, the one that was later known as the beginning or the kind of uh, announcement of such a thing as international style, a term coined by Philip Johnson and um, Henry Russell Hitchcock in their 1932 exhibition at MoMA and the book that accompanied the exhibition with the same title, The International Style Architecture Since 1922. Um, they not only claimed, uh, actually following Mertod's um, argument, uh, they not only claimed that there is a new style is getting shaped, which is uh, purely based in Europe and uh, in America, which is to be called the international style, also traced their origin to uh, the the evolution of the functionalist architecture in Europe, but also the advice that international style presents such a great uh, combination of the best principles of modern architecture that is to pra be practiced uh, all around the world, a recipe for all. But among the presented work at the MoMA exhibition, there was a project by a young fellow, uh, Gabriel Gavrekian, who was presented uh, curiously as a French architect. And his project was uh, a villa for uh, a very famous fashion designer at the time, uh, Jacques Haim, in Paris. Born in 1900 in Istanbul, uh, Gavrikian grew up in Tehran. And in fact, uh, a particular, he, he represents a particular figure in the history of modernist architecture. He is not only one of the most prominent and yet lesser known uh, figures, but perhaps is the exceptional one. Um, he was a nomadic figure whose constant movement made possible the first exchanges of ideas between the East and West, but also between the various schools of thought within Europe, uh, the French avant-garde, the Vienna uh, Werkstatt, and Russian constructivist, Dutch the style, the German ring, and the Bauhaus. Although a uh, few available accounts and Gavrikian's works basically sees uh, the Siam First uh, Congress as his professional inceptions, but also even close reading of the correspondences and invitation of that very famous Congress shows that actually that uh, the shaping and the establishment of, of the, such an event uh, owes to Gavrikian's extended personal and professional network. And in fact, due to his unique character, he was everywhere and nowhere. There are perhaps uh, two reasons for such faint exposures. Um, he was, of course, a non-European nomadic figure, hopping countries and continents, mostly by force and sometimes by choice. Uh, his constant movement across the world um, on one hand and also being a minority on the other hand made it much easier for the writers of such history to edit him out uh, in favor of more powerful members of the professional society. Such academic and intellectual cruelty uh, if you like, can be seen also in undermining his role in establishing uh, the, the Siam Congress, which stands for, of course, Congress of uh, Modernist Architecture, 
um, or even his very groundbreaking uh, ideas at the time, um, early 1920s, such as roof gardens, uh, pilotis, external staircases, which all of which became uh, the signatures of modernist architecture in the years after. There is perhaps another unique characteristic that makes him appear everywhere. He was a socialite and a multilingual, uh, by, by passing camps fortified by ideas, cities, and languages, and even within Europe. While in Vienna, he was one of the closest friends of the eccentric figure Adolf Loos. When in Paris, he played basketball every Tuesday night uh, with Tristan Zara and Le Corbusier. And of course, his friendship with Gropius and Moholy uh, resulted in publishing his first project as a 23-year-old boy in the International Modern Architecture book by Bauhaus. That project is this one, which was called uh, Hotel Touring Club, that at first might seem like a very banal or simple modernist building, but Gavrikian proposed it as an expandable, both vertically and horizontally, model that can be a space along the newly built highways in France uh, in, within the interval of 300 and 400 kilometers. The prototype was designed to form a network city uh, with, uh, of minimum habitation units, um, self-sufficient, uh, having, of course, addition to the habitation units, it contains restaurants, cinemas, theaters, laundry, daycare, uh, hospitals, and of course, car repair workshops and garages. Even, even the, the way that he uh, drew the plans and sections is kind of unfinished, is uh, asking for expansion. The project was presented at the Salon de Thème in 1923, together with other projects by Loos and uh, Corbusier. It was received actually very harsh critique, uh, it was compared to primitive and barbaric structures to be found in Egypt and Mesopotamia. Uh, with no decoration, the cubic appearance, and uh, the idea of the autonomous, self-sufficient cities uh, and collective infrastructure was nothing that a uh, French critique of the time would appreciate. A few years later, uh, in a preface of his book, Hotels and Sanatoria in 1931, Gavrikian actually locates the origins of the contemporary hotels in caravansarais and monasteries in the Middle East, where he visited them, mapped them, and uh, redesigned them and referred to them, pointing out that a certain idea of collective short-stay accommodation had endured despite the revolution in the means of transportation. Expanding on this theme, uh, he writes, and I quote, uh, recent social changes have given rise to a new way of, ways of living inspired by the idea of staying in a hotel with a minimum private habitation unit is served by common spaces of work, leisure, and relaxation. This was a kind of, um, let's say, a collective uh, living embraced in his project, Hotel Touring Club in France. Gabriel innovative designs continued in the years after when he received uh, the client's approval for uh, his proposal for a villa in Saint-Tropez in 1928. The construction began actually in 1929, uh, but um, sadly it was never finished due to lack of financial support from the client side. It's a, it's a very familiar image for us architects, a cube suspended on slender columns, a feature that soon became known as a Corbusier's signature in Villa Sawa, which realized two years after. Uh, his references, Gabriel references to non-European uh, typologies uh, and archetypes was not limited to the caravanserais, of course. His most well-known projects were the ones uh, inspired by, by the gardens and in the making and design of his modernist gardens. Although Gavrikian was very much at the center of what was happening uh, during 1920s in Vienna and Paris, um, but it was the 1925 Art Deco exhibition in Paris that brought him to the attention of media and general public. He later recalled this moment, uh, and of course, since he was uh, born in 1900, back then he was a 25 year old boy, of course. He, he says that, and he remembers, I felt very odd. I was hardly more than a boy and the rest of the jury were old men. He was appointed as vice president of the music section of the exhibition and a member of the architects, um, architecture section. But most importantly, his project uh, for a garden that was called the Garden of Water and um, Light won the Grand Prix Award of the landscape section of the same exhibition. A triangular garden was like no other. A walled space, a, a place, um, a piece of landscape contained within a boundary made of concrete uh, and colored glass. Uh, at the center was tiered fountain on top of which Gavrikian installed actually one of the first uh, sculptures by the French glass artist Louis Barrier, a disco ball, a rotating uh, disco ball, which was kind of um, 
ref, uh, reflecting uh, not only the light, but also the reflection of the light from, from the fountains. Contrary to the common European traditions of the garden design uh, at the time, French, English, Italian, uh, and, uh, and Spanish, of course, Gavrikian's project put forward a new image of uh, the garden formalized and manifested fully through archi architectural forms, elements, and tectonics. Uh, the garden installation stood against any imitation of nature, both in forms and concept. In a way, the project celebrated architecture as a contrast to nature, uh, than garden as a form of imitation. Many art critiques and scholars uh, during that years and also the years after considered this project as one of the first attempts to apply modernist principles uh, on landscape design. But according to the, actually to the French uh, landscape architects and critique, uh, Jean-Nicolas uh, Fossier, who was the co-curator of the e exhibition in 1925, actually Gavrikian's inspiration directly uh, comes from his familiarity with the Persian gardens. His garden projects developed even further when Charles and Marie Noyer uh, visited the exhibition and commissioned him to design another garden for their villa in Ire, South France. And Gavrikian, of course, gladly accepted uh, to design 120 square meter um, triangular garden again uh, in the Villa Noyer. The plot was framed by crisp walls. Uh, the ground plane was tilted um, and, uh, and flower beds filled with brightly colored tulips uh, were arranged in a mosaic checkboard pattern framed with this kind of white um, concrete dividers. At the peak, um, there was a sculpture by Lipschitz, uh, a cubist sculptor, uh, a bronze guitar player that was mounted on um, a motorized pedestal rotating every four minutes. Upon its completion in 1927, the garden immediately found, uh, celebrated actually, and, and found its way to celluloids and featuring in a number of actually sequences in Man Ray's uh, famous 1929 surrealist film, um, The Mysteries of the Chateau of Dice, and photographs of the American photographer, Teresa Bonny. It was also through the same circle of friends uh, that Gavrikian was introduced to the young fashion designer Jacques Haim, uh, a project that he designed and built for him uh, in the outskirts of Paris, uh, the neighborhood of Neuilly, uh, which is the one that actually was exhibited at the international uh, uh, style exhibition at MoMA in 1932. Uh, purist uh, cubic form and elevated gardens, and roof terraces, which soon appeared in many of the modernist architects' works. Gabriel Kians followed the same approach uh, in his projects in Tehran when he returned back uh, in 1933. During uh, his rather short stay in Iran, he designed around uh, 20 villas and uh, a few public uh, work. Uh, all of them became prototypical models for the modernist architecture in the Middle East. Here we see Villa Khosrovani uh, that is carrying uh, some of the innovative feature that he practiced and experimented with in uh, Villa Aim in Paris, for example, or another villa uh, with more limited budget uh, that reinterprets some of uh, Gavrikian's Viennese experimentation applied in a Middle Eastern context. In Tehran, he began educating students and young professionals about the modern architecture. Uh, the experiment, uh, this experiment together with the interruption caused by the World War II caused, uh, actually uh, left a massive impact on Gavrikian's career, professional career, spending much more time in education, uh, publication and exhibition all around the world. And of course, his traces can be even found here and this is cool uh, when in a letter to uh, Philip Morton Shand in 1946, uh, he discussed an, an exhibition that he's curating at the AA uh, on the work of the French cubist painter, Fernand Leger, um, and he's, he can't wait to, to have this exhibition open in July 1946. We searched for it, but unfortunately there was no uh, trace of, or photographic trace of, of that exhibition. After Tehran, uh, he was invited to teach uh, in various schools, including Saarbrück in a School of Arts and Crafts. And since then, he spent the second half of his professional career uh, as an educator and professor of architecture in multiple universities, such as Alabama Polytechnic, University of California, Carnegie Institute, Salzburg School of Architecture, and finally arriving to Chicago, where he spent the rest of his career and life in the University of Illinois from 1949 to 1969 teaching the American students uh, the principles of modernist architecture, both arriving from the European uh, precedents and non-European. Um, 
Jabrikian's legacy or any other obscured modernist uh, cannot uh, be revisited, of course, by going only through uh, what they've left behind as projects. Uh, in a history, it is a history that can only be comprehended through its fragments uh, from architecture built, uh, drawn, written, lived, uh, and of course, taught by, by these figures. For this very reason, um, the research that I developed on, 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 on Gabriel Kian's work uh, acknowledged uh, and represented his legacy through uh, 20 microhistories, sometimes parallel, anachronic, and even contradictory. Uh, this project uh, was adopted not only, um, this approach was adopted not only as a narrative tool, um, but rather uh, in line with the, with the true agency of such historiography that is to question, to challenge, or to distort the meta-narratives. Um, in perhaps in a Benjaminian sense, that could be read as a counter-hegemonic. The idea of historiography uh, that has a political agenda, of course, is nothing new. Um, as it was advocated by many other historians, although whose aim was not necessarily to challenge the Eurocentrism. Um, but I would argue uh, that it could serve that too. Um, rephrasing Manfredo Tafuri's thesis on modernist architecture, uh, I would claim one could not hope to reveal the ideologies that were represented by architecture through the production of an alternative architecture. Architecture had been such an integral part of the colonial project that it is almost an illusion to hope that it could critique it with a counter project. Tafuri further elaborates on this position and uh, takes us to his thesis on the historical project that he puts forward at the beginning of his 1980 book, uh, The Sphere and the Labyrinth. He suggests a model of history that is, that's a, it is an assembly of fragments, micro histories. Uh, through the words of the, another Italian historian, Carlo Ginsburg, uh, microhistory is the one that through the careful analysis of clues, traces, and documents does not shy away from attempting to understand the true meaning of the specific historical episodes or artistic objects. In my short intervention today, um, and through the examples of Gabriel Gavrekan's legacy, I would like to suggest a methodological approach uh, to the question of Eurocentrism and Western canon in architecture. Uh, such an approach uh, is a historical, or better said, historiographical one, in which the dominant Western canon could be challenged not by a counter-argument or by the same tropes of the colonial project, uh, but rather by giving more agency to the microhistories, um, a form of critique that instead of reading architecture as a political form, revisit the history as a systemic revelation and critique of the ideologies that architecture embodies. Thank you.